What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. My name is Splattercat, we are here today finishing off this location. I guess I could have done this off camera, couldn't I? I could have done this off camera, but I guess we'll take a look inside this building. Can't move the target? Here, move the target. When I move, you move. Hit that door. When I move, you move. Hit that door. I don't think a riot baton would be a great way to get a door down, but I get- I heard that they're trying to make the game more complicated now. Like, I feel like they may have missed the bus on that one. Like, it's been a couple... Oh, it goes down. Ooh. I don't know what to think about this. This might be a little risky. Yeah, it looks like there's a bomb shelter down here. Ooh. Well, there's the important stuff right there. Like what? Those are kegs of, like, motor oil. I'd be like, oh, Jesus, why would you do that to me right now? All I need is ale. Like, why can't they be ale casks? What's the difference between a cask and a keg? Does anybody know the difference? A cask and a keg? I'm assuming there's a difference between the two. Maybe in dimensions or sizes or something. What the hell is that? Just like a workbench? I think that's another lathe or whatever. Well... Bill says, none of the eight of us are bit. We're not risking it. Get out or we'll take you out. I don't think I have the equipment right now to fight with the military. I mean, my all-star shooter, we thought that there was nobody here. Hold on. We're going to come back. We'll come back and we'll deal with this in just a second. But we need to re-equip for it. There's no way I'm taking a risk going in there. Especially since you can hear humans talking. I'm not going in there without, like, gear. Ready to take bullets. Like, if I'm going to get shot, I damn well want to make sure that I got a couple of bulletproof, like, pillows on my chest or something going on. I don't know. Pillows. I love pillows. My cat loves pillows, too. She sleeps in the middle of it like a little princess. It's the most ridiculous, ludicrous thing I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, she will find the pillow that you sleep on most. I don't know if it's because she likes the smell of your head or what it is. But anyway, she finds a pillow, and she gets in the middle of it, and then she curls up in a little tiny kitty donut, and she sleeps in the middle of the pillow. Almost as though, like, you know when the ring bearer comes in at a wedding, and the ring is, like, perfectly, like, in the middle of the cushion? And there's that tiny little petite indentation. I really wish this would stop happening. I cannot express how much I would love for this to not happen anymore. Uh. Here, just go right here. Maybe he'll get fixed. I don't know. Come on. It's almost like it cues up the movement orders at some point. I don't even... Nope, he's still broke. Damn it, Vic. Alright, so you stand right there. Okay. So now Vic's the leader. Like, yeah, Vic's the leader. And then we'll go back over here. His mustache gives him the powers of command. We need a hairdresser. That's what we're missing right now. We've got everything but somebody to cut hair properly. Pretty soon we're all going to look like a bunch of Curious Georges because we're not going to know how to do our hair. It's going to like shave our heads. That's what I look like when I shave my head. I look like Curious George. I got the exact same hairline too. I look like, if you don't know who Curious George is, he's like this little monkey. And he hangs out with the man in the yellow suit. Why the man is wearing a yellow suit, I'm not so sure, but he is. It's a man in a yellow suit. Why? I don't know. There's not a whole lot of government agencies that have yellow suits. I assume he's some kind of like hazmat person and that the story takes place in the post-apocalypse. Not really too positive about it, but anyways. Curious George is like this little monkey. It's always getting into shenanigans and like ruining shit for the man in the yellow hat. But for some reason, the man in the yellow hat still loves him afterwards. Maybe that's the point of the story. I don't know. Either way, though, if my monkey was causing shenanigans like that, I'd be like, nah, not today, monkey. Not today. I'm going to put you on the porch and feel free to go find another family. Later. <laughs> I would never do that to my monkey. I love my monkey. I like to pet my monkey. Yeah, you know where this is going. You know where this is going. I don't even need to finish the monologue. You know where this is going. Just fill it in. It's fine. I'm just gonna I'm gonna resist the urge. You just go ahead and fill it in. It's exactly where you think it's going. It's exactly what you think it is. That's it. Let's go. <laughs> what do I want you to do? Well, we could give you a crossbow, but I feel like you do better with a rifle anyways. Although, didn't we note that the hunting rifle didn't really, like, do any damage in the first one? We only have 33 57s? But yeah, apparently the developers are going back through. I didn't finish that thought earlier. Apparently the developers are going back through and, like, making the game more complicated now in post-release. Like, they're going to add more, like, XCOM, like, cover mechanics and stuff like that. I feel like they should probably just not waste their time, to be honest. Like, my point is this, and I'm not trying to be a negative Nancy right now. But the amount of work that goes into doing something like that... 
It might be a bit much for a ship that hath already sailed. Just my opinion, like, they're never going to get the influx of customers back that they got with, like, their first release. And I'm not saying they shouldn't fix the game. They should definitely fix the things that are here, but take the lessons on board and then probably, like, move on to the next title. Make another zombie game, you know? Make Dead State 2 that takes place in another location where it's got, like, the mechanics that you start with this engine right here and then add the upgrades to that. But adding all the previous mechanics to this game... I don't know. It just, it seems like that ship has sailed already. Like, I don't think that's the way that's, that people are... I don't think that's how you get forgiveness or whatever for, like, the buggy release. They should just, like, let it go at this point. Just take the lessons on board and, like, move on to the next thing. That would be my advice, personally. I don't know. I'm gonna put on gas masks just in case, actually. Let's... Let's go chem resist. Does a gas mask actually stop, like... Because it says we only have 50% chemical resist. Will it actually stop, like, tear gas or whatever? I've never actually contemplated this. If it has the right filters, I have a gas mask from like the 1920s in my closet right now that my dad gave me when I was a little kid. Where he got a gas mask, it's from World War II. It was one of the standard issue ones that people got like, I don't know, where if you worked somewhere where you needed a gas mask during World War II. I don't, I don't really know where this is leading. What is that? Dried fruits? Okay. Well, here, let's throw that in there. We'll take a little bit more armor. I feel like I just keep, wait, Ephraim? Why am I on Ephraim right now? Did I misclick? I misclicked. So she's equipped. He's equipped. He's missing the armor. There it is. Okay, and so we can actually give him... Where are the other ballistic gloves? I know they're in here. Ballistic gloves! Where are you? Would you like to be inside my inventory? Oh, there they are. He already has... Wait, what? He's missing a head accessory. Okay. So he needs a gas mask then. Just in case. Everybody got a mask? Everybody good? Okay. So now we're ready to rock. Let's get back out here, and I think if we can handle this location... Oh, we got to sleep for the night. Never mind. We'll go back tomorrow. Let's go ahead, and it's way too late for us to head over there right now. Otherwise, we're going to have, like, a super, super horrible hit debuff, and it's going to be lame, and it's going to make me very, very sad. It's going to be quite hobbled and limping. All right, so 91 more morale because we are good at looting stuff. I should probably go around and make people happy. Maybe I'll do that in a second, too. You were raised on a farm, too? You and me got a lot in common. Salt of the earth, both of us. You, too. Did you get homeschooled? Did you go to school like this one? I went to a school, but I didn't like it none. Kids were a bunch of ass. Uh, I didn't get along with them so well because they would tease me about my weight. Tease you? Why, you're just perfect the way God made you, Troy Cooper. That's real nice, Priscilla. Like something my mama would say. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say something to make you sad? Did you lose it recently? Nah, it wasn't that. It's just, you're real pretty like her, too. Well, I bet you'd make a great mom, too. Really? Yeah. You're nice and from good stock. White, Christian, who knows? We might have to repopulate the earth after all this. Well, if it had to be anyone, I think you'd be a good choice for a wife. Oh, God. I really... <sighs> She's so sheltered. I don't even... You know what? I don't care. Not my business. Not my business. Whatever. <laughs> I don't feel like dealing with it. I can't deal with people that are being all smoochy poo and shit with each other. I just, nope. It's like when you're at the bar and like there are people that have game and like the whole thing plays out like a chess match. Like the girl and the guy at the bar, they're like perfectly like countering and like parrying and they're both, there's like a mental joust going on right now to determine who is worthy. And then other times, two people flirting, it's just like blue-footed boobies just like flopping on top of each other. It's like, rawr, rawr, and it's just awkward to be around. Just like, I don't want to witness this. I don't even want to be near you. Until you both grow some game, I'm just, wait, there's a fight in process? Let's fight it. Let's find out. Hold on real fast. I just want to know. I don't know if we've ever seen this one before. Oh, never mind. It's these guys. Oh, we've seen this one before. I'm paranoid because I don't want to leave any survivors behind. Like, I want to, if there's any survivors left, I want them to be friends with us. I might just let these people get eaten. As I recall, that's what happened last time, is they get overrun and taken out. They do have a lot of guns, though, and they are shooting quite loudly, and it might expedite the process of getting the hell out of here if I just, like, help out a little bit. Oh, y'all about to get bit. That doesn't look good, is it? It's like a tide of undead coming towards you. And not like the clean, let's do our laundry type of tide, like the whoosh gonna take you away to sea and beat you with some driftwood type of tide all right let's get over here 
Part of me is a little bit worried that like we're gonna draw attention to ourselves by helping with this, but it's too late now. I want the advanced combat armor. Who has advanced combat armor? And plus, when do we get power armor? That's what I signed up for here. I won't be happy until I go when I walk. This is a chick. This is a chick. You've got to have like those awesome sound effects. What's the point in wearing armor if you don't get a free sound effect out of it? I feel like you should at least get one free sound effect whenever you wear power armor or play a video game in the apocalypse. Although the power armor got real ugly in Fallout lately. Like the power armor from 1 and 2 looks vastly different from the power armor in 3 and New Vegas. Like I like the Enclave armor, but the power armor Mark 1 is just ugly. It's dumb looking. I don't know who like was responsible for making that graphic, but the shoulder pads have like this weird Saiyan thing going on like I'm worried that Nappa's going to show up. He's going to like screw things up and we're going to become partners. I don't know. I feel like Vegeta when I wear it, but like goofy weird looking Vegeta, not like classic 1980s Vegeta. I don't know why you would waste shotgun shells on a zombie when you've got perfectly capable blunt weaponry like just grab a stick and hit it in the face. Hit it in the face until it falls over. Like, it just seems like a waste to me. I don't know. Get that batan and bring that up in here. What happened to Chris Catan? What happened to that guy? What happened to that guy? You never see him anymore. You never see him anymore. I think he showed up on a thing, like, the other day that I saw, and I was like, Oh my god, it's Chris Catan! Thought you, like, fell in a hole somewhere, some, and, like, somebody needed to come along with, like, a rope ladder or something and rescue you, and we just never did. Like, Ricky Ticky Timbo down the well. Like, eh. He just disappeared. Chris Catan, he was here one day, he stopped paying his bills, and now nobody knows where he is. Nobody really cared to look, either. Not after Corky Romano. Well, I know some people like Corky Romano. I think it's watchable. I don't think it's that bad. Like, some people act like Corky Romano is the worst thing to ever happen to film. It's not that terrible. Like, it's alright. It's... It's a Sunday afternoon, like, SNL spinoff show. Yeah. It's not, like, higher tier like Wayne's World, but it's alright. You know what? Let's just get this thing started. I'm gonna rush on in here, and we're gonna go and then we're just gonna start smacking people. I love Rush. Who doesn't love Rush? Rush is like one of the greatest bands ever. If you don't appreciate like how, if you don't appreciate Rush, how can you like appreciate anything in music? They're the greatest. Like, Rush is one of those great underappreciated bands that, like, when you bring them up, everybody's like, yeah, I like that band. Now that I think about it, yeah, Rush is awesome. They're kind of like Foreigner. Nobody dislikes Foreigner. Foreigner's like ACDC. They're just all around great. Like, they're listenable at all times of day. It doesn't matter if you're into rap or rock or ska or techno. Everybody loves Foreigner. They're awesome. Like, hot-blooded. Who doesn't, like... I accelerate by a minimum of 20 miles an hour on the freeway when Hot Blooded comes on. It's an awesome track. It's just downright great. Everything Foreigner does is awesome. <laughs> Go ahead and smack that guy right there. You got Head Games. God, they had so many great songs. They have, like, a lot of really, really good songs. They also have that album cover with the girl in the roller skates. Now that I remember. It's been a while, but I remember that. My mom was a big Foreigner fan when I was a kid. She has, like, a lot of vinyl. My mom has, like, a straight stupid amount of vital, or amount of vinyl. And it's all actually from, like, the original publication, like... The vinyl... Did she just take... Oh, never mind. It's Tweedle time. I was going to say, I thought that was Regina for a second. Why I thought it was Regina, I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'll deal with the zombies. Please don't bite me. Oh, man. I took three points of bite damage. How come nobody's ever gotten infected? I think the infection criteria need to be a little bit higher. Like, anytime you get tackled, it should make the check. Maybe. I don't know. Something to make you get infected a little bit more. Because it just doesn't seem, to, it doesn't seem to happen very often. I heard that when the game first came out, everybody got infected, like, on the first bite. Like, the second a zombie scratched you, you got infected every single time. And that seems like a bit mutt here. Put you out of your misery before this turns into something that I don't want it to be. Are you dead? Oh, you're actually, like, done. Alright. Mort, I suppose. Oh, that one came back. But I smacked him in the head with a blunt implement. He shouldn't have come back. Like, by the rules of zombiehood, I hit you in the face and broke your brain. It should no longer function. Huh. I guess that was just like a development oversight or something. Like, even if you kill him with a blunt weapon, they come back as a zombie. A tough zombie. A zombie with chops. There we go. A zombie that's been running around like New York City behind a guy on a bike. Just like... I still have punch out. I have the original. The original punch out. Actually, my sister might have the original punch out. I don't know what happened to my NES. 
Technically, it's my mom's NES, but I played it more than anybody else, so I have, like, a weird claim to it. But nonetheless, I have no idea where the NES is. It might be at my parents' house. It might be at my sister's house. My sister does play the NES a lot, so technically, she's really into Nintendo stuff. She's a big Nintendo fan. Big Kingdom Hearts fan, too. My sister has, like, every piece of Kingdom Hearts memorabilia known to man. Like, seriously. Her room is like a shrine to Kingdom Hearts. Pretty much. Like, more or less. It's up. It's pretty cool. You gotta be into stuff. Edible insects? Nah. Not gonna take that one home. They sent us out to get legitimate supplies, and if I come back with a basket full of insects, I feel like I'm gonna get some very, very incredulous looks. Alright, let's get back down in here. Let's get everybody locked in with the stuff that's gonna help. I mean, we may just have, like, a conversation down here that we need to have with somebody. It may not even be a combat, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. That's the thing here, is that if I walk down those stairs, and I end up staring down the barrel of a grenade launcher, or, like, somebody's down there with their noob tube, they got a bazooka ready to take me out, I don't want to be that guy that was just like, Well, I thought it would be okay. I didn't think anything bad would happen. I mean, we're in a military base, and there were some spooky stairs, and I didn't think anything bad would happen when I walked down them. I mean, obviously, it's only the place with the best loot in the entire game. I mean, obviously, nothing terrible is going to happen here. And so, I don't want to be that guy. That's just not who I strive to be in life. I strive to be alive, mostly. You must gather your party before venturing forth. They need the voice from the guy in Baldur's Gate. You must gather your party before venturing forth. I don't know, though. Let's go ahead and see what we can handle here. We want to go very, very slowly in here. Because obviously we've got some serious issues to deal with. I have no clue what we're looking for down in it. Oh, there's a guy over here. What's he got? Oh, he's got like a Spaz-12 or something. What the hell is that thing? Like a combat shotgun? He's got, like, sleeve tattoos, too. Guy's looking pretty gangster right now. His name is Lance. Well, Lance, it appears as though we're engaging in combat now. Ow! Okay, so Lance, you bastard. Takes me 4 AP to fire this thing. Well, enjoy. So we got him for 98 points of damage. That's the perfect opening that we could have asked for in this situation. A very, very good opening, in fact. But I hear a lot of doors, like, opening and things, like, moving around and shuffling. So I'm a little bit nervous about the way this is going to go down. A little bit of extra damage right here. If we can get rid of Bowman over here. I'm sorry. If we can get rid of Bowman. If we can get rid of Shotgunner, I think we'll be in decent... Oh, he's already down. Okay. So let's advance, I guess. Hold on. You... Paul, reload. I put us back into combat right there because I can still hear footprints like running around our footsteps. Oh, there's a guy down the hall with a riot baton. Okay. Or, I'm sorry, he's got a police, a nightstick, or whatever the hell it's called. A billy club, whatever you prefer to call it. On this side, since they're in melee, we're going to step in right here. His name is Karnov. Okay. I think I should be able to attack from right here. I'd love to knock him down and maybe limit his amount of AP for right now. See if maybe we can finish this off quick. Point blank, bow to the face! Ugh. 45 points of damage. That's actually one of the smaller crits we've ever... Oh, there's a guy with an MP5 over there, too. Okay, so that's not so fun. Maybe swap with you. And then finish off good old Karnov. No, you only got him for 39. Well, we did our best, I guess. Ow. We've been shot for zero points of damage from one side. Two more gunshots right there. Well, if we were trying to sneak around, we're no longer sneaking around, so... People are now aware of our presence, if nothing else. Oh, I didn't want to do that. I was clicking on Regina. Hold on. Oh, man. Ruined. My best character, too. My best character. Karnov is bleeding for three points of damage. He's also doing a reasonably decent job of standing up. Ow! Apparently, he's trying to set me on fire with a torch that's not even lit. I don't really know how that's going to work, but I guess it works. I don't know. I'm not the guy that's in charge of that. And so now Karnov should be knocked out, yes. Which brings us into the next room. So what happens when you're on fire? I assume that it probably hurts a little bit. It's probably a little bit crackly. It's probably got like that pork rind smell in the air. I don't know. Zero damage done right there. How did he light me on fire with a torch that wasn't even lit? It was just like a stick with like a rag on the end. Maybe I'm more flammable right now. Maybe that's how it works. I don't know. Either way. We need to get on this. Does the nightstick do more damage? Because the piercing doesn't appear to be getting the job done at all. How do you miss a guy that's laying on the ground? How is that a thing that you can accomplish? Ooh, he's got a Molotov. I'll take you. Yeah, and the incendiary grenade too, just in case we need it. Sure. Why not? 
Ow, seven damage. That's actually a lot. That's more than I expected. I'm gonna kill off these two idiots and then we'll move into the next room and see if we can finish off some of their friends. Bill, time for you to get dealt with. I hit Lance for 600 damage. Wow, 562. He absorbed 29 of it. Good for you. Good for you. Is there something ironic about a guy named Lance being killed with a spear? I think that irony has been breached. And I think that if we're not quite there, we're at least sort of like around the corner from, wow, that guy got taken out. That dude got dealt with. How do you feel right now, Bill? I'm like, well, that pain really fits the bill. It's, it definitely matches up with the stipulations and also the, oh no, chemical grenades. They're throwing gas bombs at us again. We're killing a guy named David next. Well, actually, I think Bimmy's up next. Bimmy? Must be a nickname. Did your mother name you Bimmy? Like she just roll her face on a keyboard or something? All right, well, whatever. Bimmy's getting dealt with. Bimmy's about to have a real bad day. Point blank, arrow to the face! Ugh. 36 points of damage for Bimmy. That leaves us with... Oh. Let me reload the old crossbow here. All right. His pants look different, too. Like, he looks like he has more awesome pants than I do. I don't like that. I don't like it when people have cooler pants than me. Have worse pants than me. It's the least you can do in this situation. All right, I'm still burning to death, kinda. We'll go straight through. You're not dead yet? Okay, so Bimmy is finally... Bimmy's actually a pretty tough dude. He took a lot of damage. Bimmy's one mean SOB. On this side, we don't have a whole lot of cutting, slashing, or whatever, like, protections. So, unfortunately, we are gonna have to do this one the old-fashioned way. That knife is gonna hurt a lot if it finds purchase. Okay, so we've got about 70 damage away on him. He's badly wounded, but it's not gonna be enough. I think he's still gonna get... Just keeping it up with them chemical grenades, huh? There's no friendly fire on the grenades, as far as I can tell. I don't know. Probably step to here. See if we can get a couple swipes in. Ow! Counterattacking! That's not allowed. Intelligent gameplay is not cool on the part of the AI. I want tattoos on my character. I'm a little bit disappointed my character doesn't have sleeves. I'm trying to have sleeves in real life right now, but... I don't know. It's like one of those things that, once again, you have to schedule like six months in advance with like a decent tattoo artist because you want to be that guy getting discount tattoos. Because $50 tattoos definitely look like $50 tattoos. If you pay 25 bucks for like a giant arm piece, it's going to look like you paid 20 bucks for it. You get what you pay for with tattooing. At least that's what I found. What does this guy have? Whatever he has, I want it. Give me that. All of your stuff is now my stuff. And then we're going to equip it on somebody because it went straight through combat armor like it wasn't even there. So, Paul... I've got a message for you. You need to talk to Tweedletime, like, right now. You need to trade with him. And Tweedletime is going to give you a shotgun and some shells. And what I need from you is to just use these because it's awesome. And it's a really, really cool gun that looks like something Arnold Schwarzenegger would have wielded back in the early 80s. And so, yeah, what's the reload cost? I don't even care. Just put more bullets in it. It holds eight bullets. It holds eight shells. You're going first, Paul. Well, maybe I should heal people. Hold on, I'm getting too excited right now. I got awesome weaponry. And I get to use it. So, Paul, we need to heal Victor, yes. And we need to heal Tweedletime. Tweedletime's health could use some work. I'm going to leave the bodies where they are for right now. And then we'll come back in a bit. What is this, a wine? You guys got a wine cellar in your military base? What kind of military base has a wine cellar? See, that's why people join the military. Now I know. See, I just thought it was people wanted to shoot awesome guns and wear super cool otter, like armor and body suits and, you know, just look badass for a living. And then I found out it's because every military base... They got an Xbox, too? What? Oh, this military base... Hold on, I need to go talk to a recruiter right now. How do I get signed up for this duty right here? Where you just get to hang out in a bomb shelter and drink out of a wine cellar and, like, have awesome guns and play PlayStation all day. How do I get that? Where's the package that signs me up for that? I'm gonna try and get... Clark, why can't I stab you? I clicked you, like, 30 times. Ow! Point-blank grenade! Oh, the grenades do affect everybody. Hey, what's up, pal? Oh, you missed! With a 95% chance? Oh, the XCOM is real right now. The XCOM... No, don't grenade again! Ow! How dare you grenade me twice and then shoot? Alright, well, I guess you don't have much care for your friends. Hopefully enemies can't get down in here. Why is he still not attackable? Oh, it's because I have my medkit out. Oh, no. Okay, well, there's 116 points right there. If he wasn't feeling so great yet, he's feeling a lot worse now. Yeah! There it is. How you feel? 
How you feel? All right, I'm gonna take the dog tags for right now. I don't think we have enough room for. Oh no, there's another one back here. Get away from my stuff. Ow! You're gonna attack me with a. Wow, this dude's a badass. What the hell kind of baseball bat did this dude have? Like a Louisville Crusher. Jesus. Now we're all dazed. Ugh, let's get up in here and fight with him. I don't know if he's just like critting over and over again or what's going on here, but I need health like really badly. So let's do that. Oh shit. This dude's a badass. Vic. His name is Jimmy? Oh my god. Well, Jimmy's locking and loading up in here. Jimmy doesn't give a damn. Alright, let me get some health back real fast. I'm gonna do my best to stab this guy, but I can't promise anything. Regina's down, and so Regina might actually conceivably die right here, which would be problematic to say the least. How are you missing? Oh shit. This dude killed Regina. I mean, I wasn't that attached to her. She was alright, but... Where did this dude even come from? Like, you see the damage that guy was doing? Wow! That dude was hitting for it. Maybe it's because we don't have blunt resist. Either way, we have to execute him now. He killed Regina. Like, it's bare minimum. We have to execute this guy. He has to die. I mean, I do it slowly and painfully, but we don't really have time right now for, like, crazy vengeance. And he came in, like, in one turn and did all that. That is no joke. Regina's dead as hell. Damn. Sorry, chum. I didn't think it was going to go down like that. Wow. Moment of silence for our fallen Regina, I guess. I mean, let me get my gear back real fast. I didn't really like her as a character anyway, so that solves a number of problems at our base. She was constantly getting in fights with people, so that's okay. I guess we've got, like, an information... What is that? The carbon fiber bat. That's why he was dominating us. Oh my god, look at that thing. It's amazing. That thing is incredible. I don't really like the knockback, though. The knockback's annoying. But... That's what was doing it. A 55 damage bat, huh? Doing more damage than just about any blunt weapon we've seen in the game so far, for sure. Well, it's going to be one of those locations. I, if we lose somebody, do we lose a lot of morale? I assume that we lose a lot of morale when somebody dies. we got another one over here. We can't even carry data? Wow, you must really be overloaded. Here, we'll drop those and pick up the data. I'm not sure if I like this resolution or not. I'm not sure how much I like this. It's disappointing. Very disappointing. It says there's one left here somewhere. Is it him? Okay. So he was the last one. Do they have, like, special rifles, or what's going on here? Grab those, and let's be out of here. I guess we can't recover our dead. I don't really know how that works. I wish I knew, but sorry, Regina. It is what it is. Somebody had to die along the way. Somebody had to die along the way, and that was just a series of crits that I don't know, like, how we were supposed to deal with it. We had crits and then misses. He stunned, like, everybody in our party on the first turn. So, like, we were dazed. Like, I was doing my best to get there, but there's not enough tactical options in the game. Like, I guess the only other thing I could have done is ran over there and rezzed her with an EpiPen, but that would have only bought her, like, a little bit of time, I think. I don't know. Either way, my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the next episode of Dead State. We lost a character. We lost a character. That's pretty cool, though. I wanted to see what the mechanic was where you lose a character anyways. And she was actually the most expendable. Had it been, like, Paul, I'd be really upset right now and debating loading a save. But it's Regina. She's alright. She's a good melee combatant, but... I'm not going to miss her that much just because of the drama she starts all the time. My name is Flattercat. I'll see you all later. Dead State. Hi, do, everybody.